excellent problem and a problem that I suspect a lot of folks are going to be watching the video for because um, there's a lot of questions surrounding this one. Okay, the first part we can do, um, it asks you to, it says Crystal earns $5.50 per hour mowing lawns. Write a rule, a function rule or an equation to describe the amount of money M, we're gonna use that variable M, that is earned as a function of the number of hours H spent. So H is gonna be the independent variable. She spent some number of hours mowing lawns and M is the dependent variable. The amount of money she earns depends upon the number of hours she spent. Okay, so what does that look like? Well, <clears throat> we're gonna say H, the independent variable, is there's a unit rate here. The unit rate is $5.50 for every hour that Crystal mows the lawn. So we're gonna put that number in front. 5.50, and we are told that the total money M earned comes from that. So we will say M is equal to 5.50H. Okay, well, <clears throat> that's all well and good, but now what we need to do is we need to plug in H. And what is H? H is the time in hours, and if we look up here, We've got this funny thing going on, which is that it's not written completely in hours. Um, now, this was, a, this was a skill that we had practiced back in the day, and I think a lot of you kind of passed over it without really mastering it. But when you are given, for example, let me give you another example of something that you might have seen. You might have seen that someone is um, six feet, three inches tall, and how many inches are they? Well, this is already in inches. That's the units we want it to end up in. This is not, and so we'd have to change that into inches in order to be able to tell us just in inches how much is that. So um, 12 inches in a foot times those six feet is 72. So we've got 72 plus this original three inches that's extra beyond the six feet. And we get 75, so that person is 75 inches tall. And that's converting this from the two different units they gave us. And so we change feet into inches, which is the unit that we want. <clears throat> okay. So we're going to be using that same kind of um, process here when we look at um, what we're doing with hours and minutes. Okay. Um, what are we trying to do? Well, they give us three hours, 45 minutes. Which part of this is already in the units that we want? This is already in the units that we want, and this is not. We need to convert 45 minutes into hours. Um, do not make the mistake of saying, is that then 3.45? No, that is not what 45 minutes is equal to. And let me just talk you through that really quick to um, keep you from thinking that that might be true. Okay. 0.45 is less than 0.5, meaning this is less than one half. Now, is 45 minutes less than half of one hour? No, 30 minutes is half an hour. This is much more than 30 minutes. So that's going to be much more than half an hour. So it shouldn't show up here as a decimal that's equal to less than one if it's much more. Uh, I'm sorry, less than one half if it's much more than one half. Okay, so it's not simply taking the number of minutes and writing it as a decimal. That is not the way to do it. Don't let yourself fall into that trap. Other people will make that mistake. Don't let it be you. Okay, uh, what do you wanna do? Well, you wanna compare this and say, what is the number of minutes in an hour? Well, how many minutes are in an hour? There is 60 minutes in an hour. So if we say, we're really talking about what is, as a decimal, what is 45 out of 60. 45 minutes out of the total 60 minutes in an hour will give us a decimal number. What is that number? Well, let's simplify this. These are both, uh, some people do it by fives, calculate, divide by five and you get nine over 12, and then say, okay, and that divided by again by three is three fourths. That's what it's equal to. You can do that. You hopefully also can see that these are both multiples of the number 15, how many 15s is 45? 3. How many 15s is 60? 
it's four. You still get three fourths. Either way is fine. Either way is fine. Whatever you need to do, you still get three fourths. Okay. What is three fourths as a decimal? Some of you may already know that the decimal three fourths is equal to 0.75. Oh, sorry, I'm running into the side here, numbers that I have on the side. So let me go back and just get that out of there. Um, 0 0.75. Okay, and that's true. That's what it's equal to, and that's what we're going to end up using. But what if you didn't know that? Well, what we're seeing here is 3, the numerator, divided by 4, the denominator. What does 3 divided by 4 look like if you write it out? Um, I'm going to write it down here. 3 divided by 4. Oops. Sorry, sometimes I hit it too many times and it takes a second to catch up. Three hours, 45 minutes. And what we're trying to do is three divided by four. And what does that look like? Three divided by four, because this is equal to, this is equal to three fourths. So we do three divided by four. How does that work? It's not big enough. Well, we can always put a decimal and then annex a zero and say, how many times does four go into 30. 4 goes into 30 seven times. 4 times 7 is 28. We got a 2. We can continue to annex or add zeros and bring them down. How many times does 4 go into 20? Goes into it 5 times. 4 times 5 is 20. And you get all the numbers brought down and 0 remaining. So this is what 45 minutes equals as a decimal. Great. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then, what do we do with that? Well, we actually want to just write 3 hours 45 minutes it as 3.75 hours. Now we've got all of this in terms of the variable hours. That equals 3.75 hours. What do we do with that? Well, we're calculating it. So we're saying m is equal to 5.50 times 3.75 hours. And I'm going to erase this so that we can do the math over here. Just a second. Um, we just have to simply do this multiplication. Um, what I've seen is that some kids actually have a little bit of a hard time with the multiplication. So let's show it. It doesn't matter which number you put first. I'm going to put 3.75 on top because then I'm multiplying by 5.50, which means just two numbers that aren't zero, the two fives, and they're exactly the same, so we'll get the same string of numbers. So first of all, if I divide by zero, I'm just going to add a whole bunch of zeros, and that doesn't do anything to our total when we sum them. So I'm not going to bother. What I am going to do is start with the 5 and say that 5 needs to become the number straight below the 5 that we're multiplying by. And so whatever we get, 5 times 5 is 25. That goes right below it. Carry the 2. 5 times 7 is 35 plus 2. I'm sorry. 5 times 7 is 35 plus 2 is 37. Carry the 3. 5 times 3 is 15, plus 3 is 18. And now we've got two zero placeholders because we want to be ending up right below that 5, the number we're multiplying by. Okay, I'm going to get the numbers we carried out of there because we're not using them anymore. And we say, okay, 5 times 5, 25. Carry the 2. 5 times 7, 35, plus 2 is 37, carry the 3, 5 times 3 is 15, plus 3 is 18. You will notice, because we multiplied by a 5 here and another 5 here, we get the exact same string of non-zero digits. 5, 5, 7, 7, 8, 8, and 1, 1. So if I did this first line correctly, then when I do the second line, I don't really have to do anything except know where to put the 5 
and then copy all these digits down the same. That, 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 that. These are math tricks that will help you speed your math up once you really understand what you're doing. That's the trick, is really knowing what you're doing so that you don't do something by accident and not realize it. That's a mistake. Okay, so now I'm totaling this up. And this is an amazing thing. In our multiplication problem, we had two, did two numbers, and those numbers had a total of one, two, three, four digits that were behind a decimal. There's the decimal, and there is one, two. There's another decimal, there's another one, two, for a total of four digits behind the decimal. That means we will need to put one, two, three, four digits, those four digits behind the decimal. And so we put the decimal there. We're talking money. Money only goes out to two decimal places. So we need to round off to this two decimal places. We look here. Is that five or higher? It is. So we round the two up to a three. And I just want to take that away now. We round the two up to a three. And we get an answer of m is equal to 20 point, I'll write the whole thing, 20.625. That last zero doesn't need to be added. It doesn't change anything. But we would then write as our final answer, because what is our final answer? The cost, we would say $20.63. So I'm going to box off the two parts that we need to know. Um, we need to do M of H. Sorry, I didn't put that part. I just said M. M of H. And here I will write M of 3.75. Sorry, I did that wrong. I didn't mean to jam that in there. Then M of 3.75 is equal to that. So that is our general function. And that is the amount that it would cost for the amount of hours she worked. Um, that seems like a long problem. I know that it's long, um, but it was worth going over because there's some big concepts in there that you need to know how to do. I suggest you watch that more than once. Anyway, where's our answer? Well, our answer is D. M of H is 5. 0 0.50 times each, and the total amount, uh, amount that she earned is $20.63. So, good luck. I hope that that was helpful. I know it was long, but it had a lot in there.